Mabad, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for as he ought to be praised and for picking and choosing his Habib Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over all of humanity. And we bear witness that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. And I encourage all of my brothers and my sisters, elders and teachers here before me and youngins to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in privacy and in public. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amunu uthkuru ni'matullahi alaykum. O you who believe, jami'an, together, remember the ni'mah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And specifically these times during Rabbul Awwal and after, there's a lot of debates, there's a lot of talks about the Mawlid of the Prophet Wasallam, which this is not the topic that I will be discussing. But one thing that I did want to discuss is the, the khasa'is, the, spe the speciality of the Prophet Wasallam. A brother emailed me in detail a, 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 a paragraph and, and, and a thesis and and he said that the Mawlid causes an exaggeration of the honor of the Prophet Wasallam. Astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, La tufarriqu bayna ahadim min rusuli. That do not differentiate between my Prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we do not differentiate out of our own whims. We do not say one Prophet is better than the Prophet. We do not say anything that really differentiates, we say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And I would like to take this time, inshallah, to choose some of the ayah, uh, uh, ayahs from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah to, to display that to everybody. We are not the ones that uh, pick the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be a mercy to all mankind where the other prophets were just Bashir and Nadir. They were warners and bringers of glad tidings for their tribe. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as rahmatan lil alameen wa ma arsalnaka ila rahmatan lil alameen. We did not pick the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, a, as the mutashaffi' as the one that does the intercession on the day of judgment when all of humanity stands be, behind him. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that picked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not us that prophesied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all the world scriptures until his coming sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not us that raised this remembrance sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that said, Alam nash, uh, that, that said, wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. We have now raised your remembrance, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of these things, the khasayas, the speciality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we just repeat those things. There is no way for the human being, there is no way for the jinn, for the, there is no way for the creation to actually exaggerate the honor in for the Prophet ﷺ. He was honored divinely by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, who can honor him? Who can measure up to the honor and love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him? In a poem, one of our one of our mashaykh and knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azad Muhammad Shabistri, he says, Ahmad Gash Dahir, Dar in Dawra Awal Ahmad Ain Akhir, Za Ahmad Ta Ahad Yak Meem Farqas. He says in this poem that Ahad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one, became known in his monotheistic religion to the entirety of the humanity through who? Through Ahmad, to the meme of Ahmad when Ahmad came. And though he was the first that was created and he was the last descent to the humanity, the difference between Ahad and Ahmad is just one meme. But the secret of the entire world is sunk in this one meme. That it was Ahmad that brought Tawheed. Nothing in the life of the Prophet ﷺ was by chance. The people that was put around him. The time that he came. Everything was planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you look at the name of the father of the Rasul وسلم, Abdullah. His paternal grandfather was inspired by Allah to name his father Abdullah. Why? Because Abdullah is the servant of Allah. He is the slave of Allah and servitude and slavehood is the greatest form of love. 
if you love if you serve somebody and you are a slave to them without loving them that's as empty worship the greatest title of the prophet sallallahu is abdullah is, is abdullah and his father was named abdullah because he brought the tawheed because the prophet was going to bring the tawheed of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his maternal uh, uh, grand, uh, grandfather named his daughter amina the mother of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam amina means safety you find safety in the Tawheed of Abdullah. Even his parents, it was decreed, their names was decreed for the coming of the Prophet As Sayyid Sharif al Georgiani mentioned in his commentary about sending salawat on the Prophet He says that Muhammad was uh, almost like a reflective mirror that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have any commonality with his creation. Laysa kamisli he shay. There is nothing like unto Allah. Anything that you can possibly think Allah is, Allah is something other than that. So he created Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who, who, who reflects this light and nur of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the form of his attributes that humanity may get to know the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and a human being that we call Insan Al-Kamil, the most complete human being. And through this light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشُ بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَثْلَهُ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجِ مِنْهَا He said, is the one the same? The one that has light, the one that we have given iman to, the one that we have given a spiritual awakening to, like the one that used to be dead, not the dead that's in the grave, but when you don't have spiritual awakening, when you are not connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're committing idol worship and you're committing and you're committing shirk, you are as good as you are a walking dead person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, did we not send, did we not give this light to you that brought you back to life, spiritual life, the real life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time he talks about true life in the Quran, Aish, Allah talks about our connection with him and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not this dunya. Some people say, oh, he, he, he's, he's, he's left life. Oh, live a little. They think that this dunya is life. They associate life with that. But true life is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why in Surah Hazab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuhu li yukhrijakum min al-dhulumati ila nur wa kana bil mu'mineen rahima. That it is Allah that sends blessings upon you and his malaika and his angels that sends blessing upon you to what? لِيُخْرِجُكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ in al nur To bring you from, from death to life, to remove you, to take you from zulumat, from darkness and into light. And then later in this chapter, later in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa la alayhi So he says, O oh, you who believe Allah and His angels presently, right this second and forever sends blessings on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O who you believe send blessings upon him. Why? Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says about this ayah He says it goes back to the ayah of Allah taking you from dhulumat, from darkness and into light. Because when you send if Allah's blessings and His angels' blessings are removing you from darkness and bringing you into light, then sending blessings on the Prophet ﷺ says what? Man salla alayya wahidin sallallahu alayhi bi ashr. That if one, if you, one of you sends one blessing upon me, Allah sends ten upon that person. And when Allah sends a blessing upon you and His angels, what happens? You get removed from darkness. You brought, you're brought into light. You brought, you removed from death, and you're brought into life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَىٰ رَحْمَةٍ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have, this is, we, we often hear this verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَىٰ رَحْمَةٍ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, O Muhammad, as but a mercy, but to all the enti entirety of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fatiha says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise belongs to the Lord of the worlds. We have to define here what does Allah means by the, by the word worlds, alameen. There's different worlds, there's this realm, alimul khalq, which we see, it's a manif manifesta manifestation and before us, and then we have the alimul ghaib or amr, the souls, the, 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 the ghaib, the things that we cannot see. Everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is, is, is alam. 
So everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet وسلم, was sent to as a mercy. Everything other than Allah, everything is alam. The angels, the arsh of Allah, the, the pen, the lahu mahfuz. There's nothing that you can think of that hasn't been created, that is not considered alam, that the Prophet وسلم, was not sent to as a mercy. And that is why his birth, his coming, was the greatest, most magnanimous day in his story, in history. In this, and even when you look at it, people try to compare, but if you look at Laylatul Qadr, it was greater than Laylatul Qadr. Khayrim in al Fishar. It's uh, greater than a thousand months this month. Who cares if you caught a thousand Laylatul Qadrs when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, An Nabi Awlal bil Mu'mineen man anfusihim. That the Prophet is closer, that the Prophet is more dear, that the Prophet takes priority over the believers even in their own souls. Even in their own souls. The Quran, sometimes people try to compare the Quran. The Quran is, is the sifat, it's the, it's the that of Allah, it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to remember, the Quran was ascended on the descended on the Prophet ikraman ala Rasulullah The Quran was given to him in, to honor the Prophet It was given to honor the Rasul So the, he's a mercy to the angels, the humans, the jinns, the animals, other nations, non-Muslims. Other nations were destroyed when they did an offensive thing. You see the Qawmulat, they got destroyed. And with them, the animals, everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent brimstone, they destroyed him. They came to the Prophet sallallahu and they said, وَإِذْ قَالُوا اللَّهُمَّ إِنْ كَانَ هَذَا هُوَ الْحَقُّ عِنْدِكَ فَامْتِرْ عَلَيْنَا حِجَارَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ يَوَتْئِتْنَا بِأَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Say, they said to the Prophet, oh, if, if this message, oh Muhammad, if this message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if it's true, and you know, and your book is true, and it's, then, then, then ask Allah to send upon us brimstone, send upon us, rain upon us rocks and stones and, and show us this adab, show us our punishment. They dared him. So if, you, if this is true, then, then send this adab upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah, he says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ And Allah will not punish them while you're with him, O Muhammad. Because he was a mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a mercy to the end of time, to the day of judgment. He is a mercy for you and I. He is a mercy for all of us here, brothers and sisters. He's amongst us, his light, his sunnah. And as long as he is, that is his khasais. That is one of his specialties, that he is a mercy unto mankind, to the animals, to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's al-raziq. He is the one, he's the giver, the sustainer. He's the one that provides. But through mercy you get, through love and mercy. So, and, the, and if you're saying rahma, wa ma arsalnaki la rahmatin al alamin, rahma denotes love. That's why the word womb of the mother, the womb is rahim, because what kind of love does the mother? Is called motherly love. And ar rahman, ar rahim, the, to the most merciful, and says that the prophet is a mercy. So it's a merciful love, a loving love. It's a love that he loves you without any condition. The Rasul sallallahu taala alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. And through this love, the remember his title is the Prophet ﷺ is Al-Qasim, the one that distributes. So through this love, everybody gets a portion. Muslim, non-Muslim, jinn, malaika, whatever it is, is through this mercy of the Rasul ﷺ that Allah has sent unto mankind, unto humanity to get it. And when you love somebody, you can explain them. You mention them. When you, when, when you love a woman, you can remember her. She had eyes like this. She had hands like this. She had this, you, you know. And if same thing with the with the opposite, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala out of His love, when you study the Quran, He mentions the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam body part by body part. Waqfid janahak the arms of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wala ta bi aminik the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qad nara ta qalba wajhak the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alam nashrah laka sadrak the chest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alladhi anqada zahrak the back of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fa inna ma yassarna bi lisanik the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La yam la tamadunna aynik the eye of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qul udnu khairun laka the ear of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ayah after ayah, O oh, O oh, Nabi, Ya Rasul. The eye, the ear, the body, every single body part of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of love and honor for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions his Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's a conversation when they come to the Sidratul Mintaha on the night of Isra and Miraj, 
when the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel alayhi salam, brings them to the furthest low tree and he cannot ascend from there. And there's a conversation and there's many variations of this, bear with me, but there's a conversation between Jibreel alayhi salam and the Prophet ﷺ and be between Allah and the Rasul ﷺ. Uh, when they come to the Sidr al-Muntaha, Jibreel alayhi salam cannot ascend. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Ahunaka yatruku khalil khaliluhu ya Jibreel. Is this where a person abandons, departs from his friend, O Jibreel? And Jibreel says, Azza alayya firaquka ya Rasulullah, wa li kulli minna maqam al-ma'loom. He says, Oh Ya Rasulullah, it, it weighs upon me. It hurts me that I have to leave you here. But all of us have a station that is known with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِن تَقَدَّمْتُ خُطْوَةً لَحْتَرَقْتُ بِأَنْوَارِ الْجَلَالِ That if I take one more step, Ya Rasulullah, if I take one more step, I will be disintegrated. I will be burned by the majesty and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His light. وَلَكِنْ أَنْتَ أَبْدُ اللَّهِ لَوْ تَقَدَّمْتَ اخْتَرَقْتَ بِأَنْوَارِ الْجَمَالِ But if you go, Ya Rasulullah, this is your station, you're the Abd of Allah. If you go, you will be enveloped in the nur, in the light of glory and majesty and beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel alayhi salam has to stay because the light of Jibreel alayhi salam is not like the light of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam where everything gets that light from him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he comes before Allah and he prostrates and he raises his head in this conversation. He says, In kunta takhazza Ibrahim khalilik wa Musa kalimik wa Isa min rawhik wa a'tayta Sulaiman mulkan azima wa rafa'ta Idris maqaman aliyya fa'ayna ana min he says to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows the answers but he says out of humility he says Ya Allah if you've made Ibrahim your intimate Khalil your friend and if you've spoken to Musa and, and Isa is a spirit from you and you've given Sulaiman a great dominion in a great kingdom and you've raised Idris into, a, into the high heavens with you then where am I amongst these people where am I? Out of his humility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, in kuntu khastu Ibrahim khalili fa anta habibi wal habibu akram alayya min al khalil. If I've taken Ibrahim as my intimate friend, you are my beloved, you are my habib. And the habib is more beloved to me. The, be the habib, the beloved is more noble to me than a friend. When kuntu khastu Musa kalimak fa qalamtuhu min waraa il hijab. And if I spoke with Musa, Ya Habibi, I spoke to him from behind a veil, from a burning bush. But here you are sitting on the red carpet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before me, Ya Habibi. And in kunta khastu Isa min ruhi, faqad qaranta ismik bi ismi, Ya Habibi. Faqad la yaqulu ahad la ilaha illallah illa qala Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, oh Habibi, if I've given, if Isa is a spirit from me, I have annexed, I have attached your name to mine. There isn't a person that will say la ilaha illallah without saying Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi. When kuntu ta'atayta Sulaiman mulkan azima, faqad a'ataytuka al-Qur'an al-Azim. فَبِئِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي يَا حَبِيبِي مَا قَرَعَ هُنَّ أَحَدٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِكَ إِلَّا غَفَرْتُ لَهُ ذُنُوبُهُ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ مِثْلِ زَبْدِ الْبَحْرِ وَعَدِدِ الْرَمْلِ وَالْحَصَى And if I've given Sulaiman a mulk, a great dominion, Ya Habibi, I've given, I've given you the Qur'an. And there's not one of you that will recite this Qur'an that I will not forgive their sins, whether it's as great as the foam on the ocean floor or the sands in the world or the pebbles and the rocks in this entire world, Ya Habibi. And he says, فَبَئِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي يَا مُحَمَّدْ لَوْ صَلُكَ عَلَيْكَ كُلِّ طَرِيقٍ وَتَرَقَ عَلَيَّ كُلِّ بَابٍ مَا, فت... ما... ما قَبَلْتُهُمْ مَا فَتَحْتُ لَهُمْ حَتَّى يَأْتُ خَلْفَكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ says, oh Muhammad, if they come to me from every single other door, if they try to reach me through any other door, it'll never be accepted from them. It'll never be open from them. The only way they will come and be accepted is if they come from behind you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is his khasayas. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala views his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And when you read the Qur'an and when you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the other prophets and you see how he interacts with the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the other prophets, they all are matloob. They're asked, they always ask. They're making dua, Allah give me. Musa alayhi wa sallam, Rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh Allah, oh, open my breast, my chest for me. Oh Allah. 
When it comes to the Prophet he didn't ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alam nashrah laka sadra. Did we not expand your chest for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When Musa alayhi salam said, Rabbi uridu an unzri ilayk. Oh Allah, I want to see you. The, he was told, Lan tarani, you will never see me. But during the Isra and the Miraj, what, is Allah, what does it say in the Quran? Ma al basru wa ma taga. His vision, his eyesight did not waver, did not move from the beautific, beautific vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu stood before him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam was not even permitted to look at him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَذَلَكَ نُورِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ And we made Ibrahim, we made him thabit, we made him, Yaqeen gave him certainty by showing him the stars. He, he looked at the, at, at the moon and it went down. My Lord can't be something that falls. He looks at the sun and it goes down. He says, we brought him, we made him, we gave him certainty. When what does it say about the Prophet Sallallahu That he was before us two bow lengths or even closer. How do you get that kind of certainty in Yaqeen? And it's saying that, and, he, and, and saying that Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he says, Oh Allah, he makes dua, he says, and abase me not on the day we are raised. Do not abase me. Do, forgive me, Ya Allah, on the day we are raised. My parents, these people around me were not Mus did not believe, Ya Allah, do not abase me. What does he say about the Prophet Allah has forgiven everything past and present with you, O Muhammad. When he says to him, on the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of the ones that are with the Prophet in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you look at the Sahaba, if you look at everybody that loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the honor that he had, they, they had for him. Abu Nu'aym reports, of a man that comes, a tabi that comes up to, to Ibn Umar and he says, Ya Ibn Umar, wadatu an ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Ibn Umar, oh son of Umar, I wish that I would have seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ida ra'aytuhu madha fa'alt. If you would have seen him, what would you have done? He said, Wallahi, law ra'aytuhu u'minu bihi wa uqabbilu bayna aynayn. Wallahi, if I would have seen him, I would have believed in him and I would have kissed him between his eyes. Allah ubashirak. And Ibn Umar says, should I not give you then glad tidings? He says, yes, yes, give me glad tidings, Aba Abdul Rahman. He says, Ana samatu an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, ma ikhtalata hubbi bi qalbi ahad fa ahabbani hatta harram allahu jasadihi ala nar. He says, my love, the Prophet said, my love does not enter one's heart and mixes inside him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make the fire of Jahannam haram on that person's body. That when you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we're talking about true love, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that the fire of Jahannam becomes haram on that person out of love as Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And this is how the Sahaba understood it. He was their Qibla. It wasn't the Kaaba. Remember, they were praying towards Jerusalem at first. And when in the Masjid Qibla Tain, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turns, the Sahaba, the most with understanding, they turned with him. He was their Qibla. Whatever they did, whatever he did, they did. That's how they love the Prophet Sallallahu Allah says in a, in a verse, he says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha najaytum rasoola faqaddimu bayna yaday najwaakum sadaqa. When you come to the Prophet Sallallahu bring something in charity. Now, the Prophets are not allowed to accept charity. So this, this is not about bringing something to the Prophet in charity. In Surah Yasin, that's made clear and we all know that this Prophet can't accept charity. But Allah is saying, show your ikhlas, show your love for the Prophet Sallallahu A woman brings a, a thing of milk. She doesn't have anything. And Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, doesn't have anything. She walks up to the Prophet Sallallahu holding Anas ibn Malik's hand. He's 10 years old. Ya Rasulullah, I have nothing else. Take my 10-year-old son, he's yours. And he grows up in the house of prophethood. He gave him, she gave him his 10-year-old son. That's the love that they had for him. Julaybib was one of the Sahabis that he was not very good looking. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, I'm not that good looking. I'm never going to get married, Ya Rasulullah. What am I going to do? And he says, go to the house of Fulan. They're a noble family. They have a daughter. Tell them Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi sent you and to give their daughter's hand in marriage to you. So he goes. He knocks on the door. The father answers. And he sees Julaybib. He's not good looking. 
And he says, I've been sent by Rasulullah sallam, to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. And he looks at him, and his wife looks from the side of the door, and they're not too happy, so they say to him, you know, just, uh, just go, and we'll talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he, he turns his head, puts it down, and starts walking away when his daughter comes running through the doors. Ya Abi, kayf radatta man asla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi. How did you turn away? How did you turn down somebody that the messenger of God sent for me? I accept. Qabaltu, qabiltu, qabiltu. I accept, Ya Abi, that I accept this marriage because why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Soban was a Sahabi that came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I heard there's levels in heaven that you might be, of course, on a higher level and I might not be there on the same level as heaven as you. And if that's the case, Ya Rasulullah, I don't want heaven at all. I don't even want heaven, Ya Rasulullah. And if that's comparing our love to Allah's love for him and to the Sahaba's love for him, then what about inanimate things? What about the palm tree? That he, was, that he used to give khutbah by all the time and somebody suggested that we turn the palm tree into a pulpit, that we turn, build the, the Prophet وسلم, a pulpit. So he left the side of the palm tree and he would start giving his khutbahs on a pulpit. This hadith is mutawatir, muttafaqun ilay. So many people narrated this hadith, it is almost, it is kufr to not believe in it. When he left that pulpit, that tree started whining and screaming. Everybody heard it to the point that he got down from the pulpit. He went up to it and he hugged the tree and held it and promised it to be, would be with him in Jannah so it would quiet down. This is a tree's love for the Prophet ﷺ. Mount Uhud, when he stepped on it, it started to shake. He said, out of reverence and honor for him, he said, oh, 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 Uhud, stay calm. On top of you is a prophet, a Siddiq in two shuhada, that he, with him was, was Sayyidina Umar and Uthman and, and Abu Bakr and he was standing, he says, stay still. And he sees Uhud from a distance and he says, this is the mountain that loves us and we love it. A mountain. And finally, the stones. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. How are we saying that we got, we're exaggerating the honor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi A tree went on an expedition, he went, Narrated by Yala ibn Mura as thaqafi he comes, the Prophet is sleeping on during an expedition, a tree uproots itself from the ground. It goes into prostration as it walks, and it comes over the Prophet to hug it. The Prophet wakes up, and he says, this tree wanted to come and give me salam and hug me out of love, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. These are things that are seen. These are things that are hap that, that in reality actually happen. And we're comparing our love. How do we even compare our love to, the, to that? And we'll finish with this. The love and knowing of the Prophet ﷺ is the most important thing that we can do. Even before prayer, brothers and sisters. These people have figured it out. That's why they have idols. That's why they have LeBron. That's why they have all of these people that people flock to in love. I saw, I saw a footage of, of, of a film, The Rock showed up and just surprised the girl and said, hey, how you doing? She started crying. Oh my God, it's The Rock, it's The Rock. The Rock has never done anything for that woman. We have to learn who the Prophet ﷺ is. We have to instill the love of the Prophet ﷺ in our hearts. And as one, it, and as one of the tabi'een, and we'll finish with this, they, they, they're sitting in, their, in a majlis of dars and they're giving a talk and they're teaching their students, and, one of the, and the, some of their students, they say to them, they say, Ya, they say, ya, uh, ya Sayyidi, oh, our master, Siflana al-Jannah, describe to us heaven. What is heaven like? Kayfa anhar al-Jannah, wa kayfa qusurina fi jannah how is, how is the rivers of Jannah? What is, the, what is the, our, our castles in Jannah going to look like? Tell us something about Jannah that's going to make us, you know, give, give, to make us enthusiastic and work for it. And he says, what else do you want? Fiha Muhammad. What else do you want? And it will be Muhammad. And if you don't want to go there because Muhammad is Muhammad's in there, then what else can I do for you? أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.